So a couple of important things happen in the world of AI. Let's take a quick look. First and foremost, White House to unveil sweeping AI executive order next week. The main focus will be AI safety, but they're also tackling immigration, meaning that they're trying to get some more AI tech talent into the country, make it easier for those people that are trying to get a work visa, those people that could benefit the big tech companies to come over to the United States. Next up is this thing, Neural MMO Challenge. So for people that are not aware, MMO is massive multiplayer online. Generally, they're RPGs, role-playing games where thousands, millions of people get together and play within these simulated worlds. World of Warcraft was probably the biggest, most well-known ones, but there are many, many others. So this is that, but with AIs as the ones playing the game. So as you can see here, we have various defense things like helmet, armor, gloves, etc. various damage doing things, food, water, HP, etc. Here's the map, and we'll see the map in detail in just a second. We have various weapons to fight the enemies fight enemies to gain armor and tools, as well as trade items on the market. And you can win $20,000, that's in real life, in various prizes. The $20,000 is not simulated, I repeat. And so the objective is to train a team of eight agents to complete tasks in a simulated world. So it's kind of like Dota, but instead of having a team of whatever, five players working together to take out the other team, you train eight agents to go and complete these tasks on your behalf. Reinforcement learning track, design the algorithm, model, features, and reward. That's for your agents. And there's the unlimited compute if you provide your own compute. So it looks like you're given a fixed eight hours on the A100, which is the powerful NVIDIA card, of training time per submission. I think I'm going to end up doing a full deep dive on this because this is interesting. I think this is where a lot of things are going, where basically we we train a lot of these agents to complete tasks in those games because it, they will transfer to tests outside of games as well with, with a few minor tweaks. It's easy to kind of research how to do it well in the game and then try to apply that to the outside world. We're doing the same thing with robotics, by the way. A lot of these robots are being trained in a simulation and then, and then those skills that they've learned transferred to the real world and it's working effectively. So here's how the game looks like. Little blocky figures running around in their wizard hats and uh, Viking helmets, etc. And here's a ruthless rogue, I would assume. And so if you want to check this out, go to aicrowd.com where they have all this information available. So you're able to use your LM agents. You can use GPT or some local LM to generate scripted agents. Anyways, it's pretty interesting, but we'll take a look at it once it, uh, once the competition starts, we'll take a look at how people are progressing. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see, especially if they have like different classes with different progressions, different dungeons, etc. The basic idea is so you pre-train an agent on certain tasks that are given to you. So for example, they give you an example dungeon, an example mining, whatever. We don't know the exact tasks. And so you use your whatever GPT powered agent or whatever to, to train them on those tasks. And then they get thrown into the real world where they have to solve a similar task, but unseen tasks. So tasks they haven't seen before. They haven't had a chance to practice before, let's say. And the goal is to create an agent that is able to solve those tasks effectively. But I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this. Next one, I found this is interesting. So NASA open sourced a monster of a mega prompt. So this is for Chad GPT, for GPT-4, as far as I understand. And so this prompt, which we'll take a look at in a second, is designed to guide a user through the biomimicry design process. So I've seen this used every once in a while. It's still kind of rare because I don't think people know really how to do this effectively, but Chad GPT and other things like it can be very effective for fleshing out certain ideas. So if you give them the right prompt, they kind of become like a, like someone that you can kind of bounce ideas off of. So you have an idea, they help you clarify it. They ask certain refining questions about it. And through that back and forth process, you can create a better idea and you can specify what they are and are not allowed to do. So for example, maybe you want them to give suggestions or maybe you don't, you only want them to ask clarifying questions. So once you specify that, then it becomes that sort of idea refiner that wall to bounce ideas back and forth off of whatever you want to call it. And then that process starts and people have said this was very effective for them. One of the things was if you've tried the chat GPT on your phone, you're able to talk back and forth with it now as a conversational assistant. Let's see if this works. Actually, I would like to bounce some ideas off of you. Ask clarifying questions that help me. Let's say that I wanted to design an AI agent capable of doing a lot of online business tasks. Help me navigate through this concept and flesh out my idea a little bit better. Absolutely. Designing an AI agent for online business tasks is a broad concept 
So let's break it down. One, purpose and goals. What specific online business tasks are you aiming for? For instance, are we talking about tasks like email management, scheduling, customer support, or data analysis? What's the main goal? Is it to improve efficiency, reduce costs, or something else? Two, integration. How do you envision this AI integrating with existing business tools? Would it work alongside current systems or replace them? Would the AI need to interact with other software or platforms, such as CRM systems, email platforms? So actually, as I was doing that, that gives me some pretty good ideas. It helps refine what my thought process is. So as soon as he asked, like, what is the goal? Well, the goal is to automate a lot of the e-commerce stuff or whatever other online business that you're running. But, you know, if I was to redo that, maybe I'd say, hey, give me just a handful of questions about a subject and stop, let me answer them and keep going. But, you know, some people have told me that what they do is they give ChatGPT that sort of prompt. They put their headphones in so that they're able to hear and talk back and forth. And then you go for a walk. And as they're walking, they're, they're talking to it. And that stimulates that sort of free flowing ideas that help them refine whatever concept they're working on. This could be for a book. This could be business. It could be anything. But here comes NASA, the super duper brainiacs, and they take this to, to the freaking moon, let's say. So seven lessons from this genius level AI prompt. So what they're doing is they're kind of doing something similar. They're helping a user accomplish something. In this case, it's guiding a user through the biomimicry design process. And here are some of the things that they, before we look at the prompt, here's notice these things in the prompt. So interactivity, the prompt encourages an interactive dialogue between the user and the AI. Oh, here it looks like they use Dara, not ChatGPT. So I apologize. Oh, it is ChatGPT, but Dara, or it's probably Bidara, as a ChatGPT-based chatbot that helps scientists and engineers learn from living things to create sustainable design and technology. Very interesting. All right, so it tells the AI to ask open-ended questions and then give step-by-step -step guidance. So the, the prompt guides the user through the biomimicry design process in a sequential manner, which is good, dividing the process into digestible steps. It also gives an in-depth explanation of each step so that you know what is required, what kind of ideas are required, and then abstract thinking. So it uses the AI's natural ability to connect abstract ideas together. Then they have constructive analysis to critique the user's input. I feel this is important because I think a lot of us have trouble taking critique from other humans, especially if, you know, there's some sort of a pecking order involved, right? If you're taking critique from somebody you're working with, they're a little bit of a competitor that might not feel good. If they're a boss, that might be a little bit threatening, etc. I feel like an AI could tell me some pretty horrible things that I'm doing wrong. And I'll be kind of okay with it. I'll be like, yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll try to do better next time. And so the AI is pushed. It pushes the user to refine their work and also cite sources that are, you know, peer reviewed and it has applications to many different fields. So here's how the prompt starts. Now, this is a big, big prompt, which is interesting. So it starts with, you are Bidera, a biomimetic designer and research assistant and a leading expert in biomimicry, biology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're instructed by, you know, us to learn from and emulate the strategy using by living things to help users create sustainable design and technologies. And so your, your goal is to help the user work in a step-by-step -step way and to cite peer-reviewed sources. Stop often at a minimum after every step to ask the user for feedback and clarifications. As we just saw, that was an important thing that I missed when I was prompting ChatGPT because it just kept going and going. It's like, here's 50 million things to think about. It's like, no, it's stop at a minimum after every step to, you know, ask for feedback. All right. So, and then it goes into details, you know, define and frame the challenge, the context, and then we critique the user's design question. Does it consider context and take the system's view? Is it too specific? Is it too narrow? Now, just thinking about this being applied to if, you know, the AI agent, ChatGPT, if it can go and, you know, query the internet at the same time to come up with examples, like I'm always thinking about how to apply this to business. So I'm not really in the biology field. So I'm kind of translating into the, the business language. Let's say you're trying to develop a new marketing strategy. You can say, okay, well, who out there is doing a, something similar that's within my, you know, we're not talking about like a multi-billion or a trillion dollar company. You know, what's a multi-million dollar company, for example, that's doing something similar and it goes, well, here's X, Y, and Z. Here's what they're doing. How could you be doing the same? Think about, do you have the resources to, you know, make that happen, et cetera. And, but I mean, this prompt keeps going and going because it's very specific to that biomimicry thing that they're trying to do. And at the end, it looks like they're asking, how can this strategy inform our design solution? So it's helping the user figure out how to use nature's designs to incorporate them into, you know, our own product design or the design of whatever thing that we're trying to create. How can we emulate nature and create a more life-friendly solution? And then we even give it nature's unifying patterns. Nature only uses the energy it needs and relies on freely available energy. 
nature recycles all materials. It is resilient to disturbances. It tends to optimize rather than maximize, provides mutual benefits, runs on information, uses chemistry materials that are safe, and it builds using abundant resources, incorporating rare resources or only sparingly. And it's locally attuned responsive and uses shape to determine functionality. And that's really interesting. I mean, this mega prompt, I think can be used for a lot of other things. I mean, businesses, if you're writing a book, if you're trying to create a whole universe, let's try, you know, think about, you know, you know, Game of Thrones, right? So what's his name? George R. R. Martin, I believe, you know, created this whole massive universe in his head with different factions and lands and conflicts. And then you have this zombie invasion and you have the dragons and you have this and that. Now you could sit down with something like this, or if you prefer to go for a walk and talk back and forth to it, do with Chad GPT, put the headphones on and just go talk to it, give it that prompt. And it's going to walk you through. Okay. Think about this. Think about that. How are, what factions are there? What are the main characters? What are their personalities? What are the main conflicts? Do these characters know each other? Are, are they in conflict with one another? What is the sort of the climax of the story? What is the resolution, et cetera? Maybe you can even ask like, Hey buddy, if you're going to create like 50 million different storylines, how are you going to end this thing? How are you going to tie it all into an ending? Maybe start thinking about that before you go on this huge journey. You know what I mean? Because otherwise it could be a mess. Next on our list, we have a joke. What happens when four pastors, a rabbi, 13 academics, and 50 MBAs were asked whether they preferred the ethical solutions proposed by New York Times ethicist or ones proposed at GPT-4? People, in fact, prefer the ones proposed by GPT-4. That's not a joke. That's real life. So this says uh, it's basically a tie, but looking at it, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's a tie because when forced to choose between the two sources of advice, people, you know, they select it 60% of the time. The AI generated advice, they, they select it as the preferred ethical solution 60% of the time. So I would say it's not a tie. GPT-4 wins. It beats out the New York Times ethicist. One other really cool thing that I saw, so this is John Romero, rock and roll. John Romero is the guy who, one of the people that developed Doom and Quake and all those games alongside with John Carmack. Now, John Carmack has been a big influence in the tech field. He's working with Elon Musk, with Mark Zuckerberg, and actually recently he announced his he throwing the hat into the AI arena with the goal of developing AGI. He's saying it's unlikely that you're going to hear anything from him and his team for, you know, at least a few years, because what they're working on are probably more fundamental things other than sort of the surface level exciting things. But what he says is that everything we need to develop AGI, artificial general intelligence, there's probably like five to 10 different concepts that when we understand them together will lead to that. So we'll see if he's right or not. It's certainly, certainly those are big claims, but I feel like he's the type of person that can probably pull it off. But John Romero was a, also a big part of that. He wasn't maybe not quite the technical level that John Carmack had, but he had the the game design level. And he brought a lot of the things with him to the, to the table. And recently he's been making more of a splash. He's been on the Tim Ferriss podcast. He just launched a book called the doom guy, I believe, and he's streaming more on Twitch, etc. So I'm not 100% sure exactly if he's just doing it for entertainment or he just wants to get a little bit more exposure online, or maybe he has some specific thing that he's trying to launch, but he's been popping in and out of my feed for a while. And here he says that his friend just launched a new course for beginner JavaScript game dev with AI. And you can check it out here. So I've tried some stuff on Udemy and it can be, you know, hit and miss, but every once in a while, I mean, there's some genuinely great instructors on there. Welcome to fast and furious game development with JavaScript and AI. Draw text, reset ball, update paddle. So one cool thing that really stood out to me is, so you can go here and you can preview some of the um, lectures, some videos that he has on it. But one thing that jumped out to me is he builds a game using generative AI, using Chad GPT. Update ball. All right. Some AI here. And so here he looks like he's, you know, putting in the comments, his, uh, his prompt for building various games. And then he's going back and forth and adding, you know, Hey, you forgot to do this. You forgot to do that. And so here he's saying that in about 20 minutes of work, he is able to create a working pong game. And now he's going to start adding graphics or skins to it and various other features. Now I'll leave it there for now. We have a lot more things coming. Stay tuned. Big things are dropping this week and the following week. So get ready for a barrage of videos because things are heating up and I'm excited to be coming here on this channel. So please subscribe and I'll see you next time.